All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Liberty Radio. We are broadcasting live from the land of endless summer once again on a Friday night. This Friday, September 15th, 2023, uh, you know, Mercury came out of retrograde at some point in the last 24 hours, which means that... uh, Technically speaking, I guess, uh, all of our electronic gadgets and widgets and thingamajigs and whatever are supposed to be functioning properly again. Uh, I'm actually curious to know what issues other folks have had uh, with their uh, whiz-bangs and whatnot this week. Because again, uh, it's been a crazy week here in the land of endless summer and i am anxious to get the phone lines open and talk to some of you and find out what is on your mind because of course i don't have anything else planned for the next two hours so it's you and me folks yeah let's see i think we might actually already have a caller on the line so hmm looking for the console is crazy ladies and gentlemen oh no here we go again Mm, i'm gonna have to uh figure out what is causing that hiccup but that's for another time not for right now who who do we have on the line hello it is Ashley slash think change repeat from the Union of the Unknowns. How are you? Well, good evening, Ashley. I'm doing well. I'll say well, because <laughs> it's been a crazy week. Uh, how was your yeah, week I, been? I wanted to hear about your crazy week. My week was weird as well. However, my stuff was not with technology exactly. It was, uh, I had two leaks in the same day. At my house. So the um dish just or like the garbage disposal was leaking all over underneath the sink mm. and my washing machine dumped water out. So it was leaking in the laundry room. Oh nice. And I was wondering what the fuck was going on. Well yeah, I mean, technically that counts because that's technology. And especially technology right. that uses electricity which is apparently what is affected when Mercury goes into retrograde. It has something to do with electromagnetism or something, I guess. I don't know. I don't understand how it works. I just know that stuff goes haywire, and it's convenient to blame it on that. Yeah, so what what happened to you this week? Well, uh, the Mexican power company came and shut off my power on uh, Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't remember if I explained exactly the setup. So this this takes a couple minutes of explanation. So the place that I'm at currently, I took over on a lease from a couple from Australia who had been here in Mexico for a couple of years. Um, and they had... They left and they went back to Australia at the beginning of the year, which was fortunate for me because I happened to need a place to live at that time. Um, So I took over their lease and apparently they had had some issue with the electric company to where they had worked out a deal with the property manager. All right. So in my apartment building, there's six apartments total, right? Three on each side and a stairwell that goes up three floors. So I'm on the bottom. There's one on top of me and then a third one up on top of that apartment. The third apartment on my side, the property manager has some sort of special deal worked out with the electric company, right? to where they don't pay the normal rates on that apartment that everybody else 
uh, is expected to pay from the power company because the way it works in Mexico, the government subsidizes the cost of electricity up to a certain point. And then once you reach that point in a, in a billing cycle, they charge you out the ass, all right? Um, so to do things like run an air conditioner all day, especially in a part of the country where it's very hot and humid pretty much every day, uh, could you could rack up a, a substantial electric bill doing that, right? Uh, basically, if you just live normally and you don't have air conditioning, you're fine. You never have to worry about uh, outrageous electricity bills. Um, but anyway, so the the third apartment has this special deal. And apparently something had happened with the couple that was here before me. Uh, I don't know what it was. I didn't uh, get details. I didn't ask for them. But this apartment that I'm in is now daisy chained um, through the power cables to the third apartment up on top because I don't even have a, uh, 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 a meter on my junction box outside. It's just bare. It's like bare wires and connections and stuff. Like it's the, the thing that's supposed to be sending power into my apartment. It doesn't, it's just dead. Hmm. Um, and so on Monday, there were a couple of, uh, workers from the power company out here uh, while I was eating breakfast. And yeah, they just went in and like undid the connection and went on about their business. And I was like, a son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be without power. <laughs> oh, no doubt. No doubt. And I mean, it was, it was pretty warm on Monday. Not as warm as it's been the second half of this week. Uh, but it was still warm. Uh, but yeah, basically we just waited a couple hours and then uh, the maintenance guy, Carlos, he went and hooked it back up. But I've been on like pins and needles ever since because whenever I see a CFE vehicle drive by, I'm like, oh, fuck, are they stopping? What's going on? It's been terrible. Yeah. Did they explain what they were doing? No, I didn't talk why? to him. Why? Well, because technically what we're doing is illegal. Oh. Yeah. So I, I pay for electricity, but I don't pay CFE for the electricity. I pay the property gotcha. manager. Yeah. Gotcha. Because I get oh. a better deal that way. So. <laughs> yeah. So that's stressful. Eh, a little bit. You, I don't know. Yeah. I, I've been... I've been managing it. It's not as bad as it was like on Tuesday. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh my God, they're like, they're monitoring it. Like I've had to, I've had to spend some time thinking it through. Number one, there's no way they're monitoring it. They, they had to have stumbled across it. Um, Cause again, there's uh Tuesday. There was actually somebody that came and read the meters. Cause all the meters are in the same place. They're on mm -hmm. this uh, little post that's at the front of the uh, apartment building. So they came and read other people's meters on Tuesday. And they didn't see anything or notice anything and just kept on going. So, but, Well, hopefully yeah, they don't come back around. <laughs> oh, they will eventually. Because um, what... I witnessed on Monday is similar to a story that the Australian couple told me before they left. Like uh, it, they, they saw almost the exact same thing happen one day and apparently, you know, use the same remedy that I did. So is it possible if they do it again, that you could just say, okay, okay. Like we'll go through the, the proper channels or because of the wiring mm. and stuff, it's not even really possible. Um, no, it's possible to, to go through the official channels. Um, I just don't see the point. Right. Like I say, there's, there's no way they're not smart meters, right? So it's not like they can, they can tap into them from the outside. 
there's no way they can possibly monitor it from the substation. So it's literally just when they stumble across it, you know, they disconnect it. But it's not like they're going to keep checking on it. Yeah. Well, hopefully, at the very hopefully least, not. it's a very long time <laughs> before they come back. Right. Uh, did you have any other technical issues aside from, you know, that whole thing? Oh, well, the uh, OBS crashed in the middle of the stream last night. Um, that was fun. I'm trying to remember what else. Uh, there. Oh, uh, I haven't been able to uh, pay my Verizon phone bill. Uh, since it was due three days ago, oh, every time that's that I why try, you were talking yeah. to the bot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every time I try to log on, I get a connection timeout error. So I was hoping to fix it easily, but apparently, no, no, that's not going to happen. And that is par for the course with Verizon. So, yeah, I expect that. So what uh, about so you? What are you well, what what was uh, what was up with the garbage disposal? Well, I think that it's probably we had these um, reusable K cups and they're metal, so it's like a metal mesh, and then you just put your coffee in there that you ground yourself, and those have fallen before into the garbage disposal, and so it's metal on metal. So that could have been what caused it, but I have no idea. I just went under the sink to get something and everything was soaked. And mm. it looked like this box of baking soda that I had under there looked moldy. And that kind of freaked me out. I think it might have just been from getting soaked or whatever, but it was it was a mess. And like I said, my washing machine had... um dumped water out the back too and this was within like two hours of each other <laughs> so i oh, even said joy. that to a coworker. i was like is mercury in retrograde what's going on um, yeah it yeah. was actually retrograde for a long time so i think it started so how long do you know i think it was i think it started like around august 20th or so like it was several weeks uh that it was in that motion But it's, yeah, only this week that it seems that things have been going haywire. But, you know, again, who knows uh, what, why that might actually be. Right. It's hard to say. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but you know the space weather guy that mm -hmm. um, I bring up from time to time? And he does say that sometimes because of the weakening magnetic fields around Earth, that when we do have solar storms that that is also messing with our, you know, our tech and stuff like that. Well, yeah, because the um, the ejections from the sun are plasma, correct? That sounds right to me, Drizzle, but honestly, I can't answer that with any confidence. Gotcha. <laughs> so, well, I think not that's my right. And I'm going to say it's right because it's my show. So. If we're Damn wrong, right. <laughs> you know, somebody else can handle that. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it that makes, it makes sense. Um, because again, if, if, you know, we are to believe science and that, that plasmids are a thing. Um, yeah, I can, I can totally see that happening, especially if it's able to make it either to the ground level of the planet or, I don't know. Maybe it's it. It can actually like hitch a ride on on one of the the satellites or or whatever that's up there floating around and you know beaming signals all over the place. I mean, hell, for all we know, plasmas and radio waves may function in the exact same manner. That does sound plausible. Yeah, because it's it, not like, like they said, cover for... that stuff in science class. Exactly. So it's like 
how do we really know that something like that isn't possible? It's just like, I, I know that it may sound insane, but I don't dismiss some alternate globe theory about the earth because it it's like, how do you know? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It, it's like, have they actually been to space? I don't know. I don't know. Is any of that stuff real? Or is know. it all fake and gay? <laughs> the problem is the people who are serious about debunking it make a much, much better case for their side than the people who claim that it's real. And that's the problem that uh, I mean, yeah. that, that is literally the problem right there. Yes, yeah. I, I agree. And I think at the very least, after everything that we've been through, especially the last four years, but like the last however many years, 25, at least 30, 35, 40, whatever. Um, I think that it's good to question everything that they want you to believe as accepted truth. You know, they're not to be trusted. Oh, definitely not. I, I would never advise anybody uh, to listen to an authority regardless of how that authority presents itself. I think there's right. a, a uh, I don't know, the word I'm looking for is not popping into my brain, but I don't know. It's it's like by the time you get to the point where you feel like you can call yourself an authority on something, you've you've already invalidated your own authority. You know, by yes. trying to claim that mantle because it's just not possible. Nobody can know everything, even about one subject. Nobody can know everything. Correct. And I think that you, you're exactly right about that because you still need to be open to new information. Even if you feel that you are an authority and a subject, like, just like you said, you don't, you couldn't possibly know everything. So you must be willing to hear new information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So crazy week for sure. I'm glad to be um, headed into the weekend. Now I did want to tell you, I am not going to be able to make it. I don't think to the Saturn day night dance party because we are going to a live show tomorrow. I'm going to see arrested development. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So they're coming to a town near me and JJ Boogie, actually the guitarist for the band and, and the original guitarist has been, um, he came on the unknowns not too long ago. And so oh, right. uh, we wanted to go. Yeah. And, uh, and see JJ boogie and see them perform. So. Well, it's awesome. It, it may cause, cause me to miss the dance party though. Oh, it's fine. Cause you know, we tape it so you can always catch the yes. replay later. Uh, Perfect. But, and yeah. well, I wanted to tell you something weird about band. Now this isn't necessarily a band that I've ever heard you play. However, I thought that you might be interested in this. Okay. So are you familiar with the machine shop in Michigan? Doesn't Apparently a it's a, it's a huge venue in Flint, Michigan, where it is like a cornerstone of rock performers to go play. So like one of those places that like every, every metal band or every rock band goes to and performs. All right. So they put out something online that <laughs> because apparently puddle of mud was going to be playing there um this weekend and they said puddle of mud has canceled all their upcoming concerts including the shows september 15th and 16th at the machine shop this is not a quote due to circumstances beyond our control end quote cancellation this is 100 percent west the machine shop, his band, and everyone involved are very disappointed. We will not be postponing the shows as we are not ever rescheduling Puddle of Mud. All tickets purchased through Etix will be automatically refunded, blah, blah, blah. So I just thought that was kind of interesting um, hmm. from a, you know, a band drama situation. I don't know if you ever even listened to Puddle of Mud, but wanted to share that tidbit. 
Hmm. I'm sure I have listened to them. Um, they don't stand out in my memory, though. But they were, if memory serves, they were popular in the mid two thousands, early to mid two thousands, something like yeah, that. Yes, something like that. Yep. Yeah. So I may have heard them, um, but it wasn't like it wasn't anyone that, um, uh, like I've never bought any of their albums. I don't own any of their music, um. I don't know. I guess they just didn't stand out to me. Yeah. I figured it probably wasn't one of your favorites, but um, I meant to actually send it over earlier, just in, you know, one of the chats or something. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was interesting. Originally, I normally I would think it seems like this is happening to artists a lot because of health problems. So that originally was what piqued my interest about it because I thought mm -hmm. that they were going to say like, Oh, well, so and so is having blood clots, and we have no idea why. Something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so and so suddenly has uh, Guillaume Beret when they've never had it before in their life. Mm. And we just can't figure out why. Yeah. It's so weird. It must be climate change. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we have to postpone the show. Our bassist had a stroke. He's doing good, though. He's great. He's resting at home with his family. And yes, it does seem weird that you never see this person again and you never seem to see any legitimate videos or anything of them. And then whenever we put their clone up, they look a little off, but he's fine. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so let me ask you this. Uh, Cause we just had our good buddy autonomy producer pop in interesting interesting i'm curious to find out who it is um i think i know so secret cloning program ashley yes let's do, talk about it do you think that that is something that is going on because before the show i was listening to last night's broadcast of uh many ice age conversations with uh david dubine and ransom godwin while I was making dinner and stuff. And they were referencing back to, I think it was 1996 or maybe 1998 uh, when they unveiled to the world uh, Dolly the Sheep, the first cloned yes. complex, you know, mammal uh, that they had been able to successfully clone. That was almost 30 years ago. Yes. It's so interesting that we are getting to this topic because this week on Not Your Mama's News, my buddy Keel um, brought the story about them starting to create the, like the faux embryo or whatever it was that they made this week. Mm -hmm. Did you see that story? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Without so that, uh, uh, an egg or uh, any sperm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Creepy. And so we talked about that. And of course, Dolly did come up and so didn't uh, <laughs> like genetically altered super soldiers and <laughs> the babies in pods and stuff like that, because how could you know? Right. Like, mm -hmm. isn't it at least a possibility? I think it's totally a possibility, you know, it, Especially when they're saying stuff like that. And then, you know, you also have, uh, who was it? Um, it was Eco something or other. Ecogenesis, I think, was the name of the company. Uh, where there was, uh, towards the end of last year, uh, they released that, um, that CGI concept video of, you know, like the, the baby factories of the future where you no longer oh have gosh. to have sex and go through uh, pregnancy and labor in order to have a baby. We can grow it in this pod now. Oh my gosh. I don't even know about that, but yeah. I mean, it's straight out of brave new world. Yeah. And it was like, these people are just telling you what's coming and what the goal is. You know, it's so creepy. And here's something else I think about is how far advanced 
is the technology than what we're even being shown as, quote, futuristic or experimental? Well, that's a good question, because I don't think you're going to get a single answer on that. Um, I've heard people (laughs) say that it's 20 years in advance. I've heard people say it's 30 years. I've heard people say it's 50 years. Um, Again, going back to the conversation between David and Ransom, they were positing, you know, what, what if, like, what if the helicopter wasn't necessarily an invention of the 20th century, but was older technology uh, that had been around. It just wasn't widely distributed, right? There's only certain people who knew how to create a contraption such as this and where to find the materials necessary in order to build it. So like, what if you were living in like 1861 and saw you know a helicopter come out of the sky and people get out of it like you know not having any frame of reference for that all what would you think of that yeah and yeah. times i think is what i would think i think i would be horrified yeah or you know some people might think that they're like gods or supermen or uh you know who knows what but again, yeah, it, that's a good point. It's it it goes back to your point of, you know, we don't know what we don't know because this stuff has been purposely hidden from us and purposely um, uh, obscured, right? Yes, one hundred percent. And and that's something I think about a lot. Is who knows what, you know? Because I try to to modify my thinking and I guess like break my programming. And sometimes Mm -hmm. I will still catch things that are still there, whether it's just believing the official narrative on that. And I didn't even realize it. And it comes up in, um, you know, just an everyday conversation or something. I, I just wonder, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I wonder myself. Uh, I'm curious if uh, Mr. Guy has anything to say on on the subject of a potential secret cloning program. Welcome to Liberty Radio, Mr. Guy. Potential cloning program? Yeah. <laughs> I oh. mean, we we know that they they cloned a sheep almost 30 years ago. They showed it off to the entire world. And yeah, then that's it. we haven't heard anything about it since. Nothing. Of course. Because that's it. They're done. They they tried it out. It wasn't for <laughs> them. They moved on to like <laughs> growing cancerous tumors into chicken patties. Oh. That's so it. more more profitable ventures then. There wasn't any yeah, money I mean, in clone, a cloning program. Well, why clone an entire animal when you could just clone a piece of its flesh? No. Unless you have a you're point. growing an army. Well, that's that point too. I think the <laughs> army's the mindless drones that have been programmed by every piece of media and oof, that's that's the army right there. They swing and yeah. sway like the ocean. And probably the real drones that they have as well, and now the um attack robot dogs. <laughs> oh, those always scared me. <laughs> They're horrifying. <laughs> You know, that was I've been freaked the one... out ever since that Black Mirror episode. Yeah, I was just going to say that. That was the one episode of Black Mirror that really bothered me. All the rest yes. of them were fine, and they didn't really affect me at all, but that one did. I never forgot it. <laughs> I never did. And I'll tell you what was the worst part was that um, it had the... Uh, the is it homing or honing so when it was destroyed that it told all the others in the area mm-hmm. to come to it that's that was scary a swarm swarm mode yeah yes which again is not out of the realm of possibility i mean that's real look at what they can do just putting on like a light show for a holiday 
Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the videos out of, like, Japan and China of the drone swarms that do the light shows for, for holiday celebrations. Those things are wild. And there's thousands of them flying around all at the same time. Yeah, they've been yes. doing it at Burning Man the last couple of years, these drone shows at night. And when Have I they? see them all up there, I imagine that one time, maybe 2009 or 10, someone mounted a handgun to a drone and went out and shot it in the woods and demonstrated that you could mount a drone with a handgun and just fly around and trigger the, you know, his YouTube got shut down. There was federal charges, I think, you know, for gun modification or something crazy, but that's it. You know, you imagine all those drones flying around in the sky. They can all have rifles with sniper cameras that could be heat censored or LRAD and, but who even needs that when you've got lasers, microwaves? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I don't uh, think it's, it's I uh... think hot war is over. It's all I think we're in the what we're in the World War Three now. A lot of people have pointed it out. Yeah. yeah, I think we have been since January first, twenty twenty. I think that was when they decided for the exercise to go live. Yep. Oh, I have a question for y'all. Um, so I remember hearing Richard Grove on a um, on a podcast and he had said this was like post COVID, but during COVID. Right. And he said that he thought that they had moved their timeline up. I was wondering if y'all had any thoughts on that. Like, what was it? Was it because everybody, you know, everyone was on to uh, Epstein didn't kill himself or, um, other types of awakening and they felt that they needed to get in front of it or or what why move it up i'll go first on this one go for it i think 2030 is what agenda 2030 seemed to just get bumped up a decade that's he said on the on Grand Theft world several times other people have said it too um i don't know if it's the epstein thing or if it's cryptocurrencies or some other something we don't know about um there may be factors that are completely unknown to us at all because they can conceal a lot of things, but it's clear that something made them jump up their programming. Like they had written this out, like 2030 was the goal. And that seems like they just shaved 10 years off and launched it in 2020. So that's what I would imagine. So do you, so you think that it would be just pure speculation on your part to assign the trigger though you think it could have literally been anything maybe even something we don't know about yeah i mean i think epstein okay. even even with epstein there's so much more to it i mean if you've read um uh the books i can't remember, I can't remember i'm spacing our name on a friday night whitney webb the, yeah the web volume set like yeah you know epstein Nation was a front man. man yeah like yes he's he's the front man and so uh, society even when we mm -hmm. see you know epstein's not dead mantra repeated somewhere it's like it's it's that's even distractionary from well who's hurt who's maxwell's dad and who worked for who and what yeah. was the real game you know because even right. then we're all oh epstein's dead epstein's not dead it's the same thing as lie hop and my hop with 911 it doesn't get to the point where yeah. we're distracted and, and right. again of knowing, it's the yeah. same it's the same thing as calling for the release of the client list as opposed to the release of the tapes boom right um, yeah i don't i recall richard saying that uh that they moved up their timeline um I, hmm, I don't know i don't know if they did that's the thing hmm. because again from from the the Rio conference in 1992, 2030 was always a target date, right? Every uh, every decade they have uh, goals that they want to have reached, and everything that we're seeing now is part of getting them to the goals that they want to have achieved by 2030. Um, I think what changed is they began to understand just how easily they were able to hypnotize the general public by putting a five inch black mirror in their hands. Mm -hmm. I think more than anything else, the decade before COVID roughly 2008 to 2018 showed them 
that if you just pacify the masses with whatever the fuck it is that they want at that particular moment, you can get away literally with murder because that's what we've been witnessing for almost four years now is just straight up murder. It's a genocide. It's more than it's um, beyond a genocide at this point. Yeah. Yeah, truly. Now someone in the chat had said uh, in response to the wave of nationalism by the likes of Bolsonaro and Trump, I personally, um, it's RBL. I, Hey, RBL. I don't think that those guys are part of the opposition. I think that they're actually part of, you know, whatever you want to call it, the big club or that they're owned and run puppets of the big club. So I think that they are more of um, moving agendas along, but they're part of it. So I, I don't think that they're concerned about Trump nationalism personally. No. Oh, uh, one more quick thing, and I'm going to um, shut up. But when whenever you were talking about you felt like the whole thing was ushered in in 2020. Mm-hmm. So this is something I've been thinking about because you know how they always pull something in April, you know, mm-hmm. Waco, Ruby Rich, all that stuff. So I was listening to some, it, it must have been that Bill Cooper clip where he was like, do you know why they always do this? It's such an auspicious day or something important to them. So, um, I think that maybe bringing it in, it actually, this most recent leg kicked off in April of 2019. That is when they burned Notre Dame. And I was just going back looking Hmm. at some of that footage. And I was like, this felt like almost like the opening of the Olympics. Weird. Yeah. In retrospect. Yes. But so I had had a, a line of thinking kind of on yours that they, it was go time as of 2020, but then yeah. reflecting on this, I thought maybe it was, maybe that was it. And, you know, they also took out the Georgia Guidestones during this time as well. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, July of last year, 2022, because that was right after I got to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Acapulco. It's like, not even a week after I got here. Yeah, Matter of fact, that was crazy. I think it was. I think it was July sixth. I think it was the day after my birthday. Okay, Wonder, I'm confirming the date right now. Oh, let's find out. Well, I don't know if RBL is going to join us or not. Uh, I think he should, though. Anybody listening can jump in and join us. Uh, The link to the call-in room is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. And uh, literally all you got to do is just click a mouse button and you're here uh, chatting with us. And it looks like Recycle Bin Laden is actually taking me up on that offer. So as soon as he pops in, we'll see what he thinks about a secret cloning program. I think Bin Laden has been recycled and cloned, and now that's why he's going to come talk about cloning. That could be. Damn, that's good. I got to get you on uh, my writing team, Mr. Guy. That was quick. That was sharp. My favorite current clone is John Fetterman. (laughs) Oh, no doubt. (laughs) Especially, especially now with the porn stash and the, uh, the, uh, what are we going to, what are we going to call him? The great entertainer, John Fetterman. He looks like a retired WWF guy. (laughs) Does. Like he's taken one too many uh, jumps to the mat and he can barely move. I don't know, RBL. What do you think about uh, porn stash? Uh, I think he resembles George the Animal Steel. 
<laughs> and that's a valid comparison that you draw, Ashley? Well, the problem is, George the Animal Steel was actually a brilliant man. <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah, he was. He was He was a certified genius. He was Dude, a... Uh, what was he? He was... I think he was a high school science teacher. Um, wow. But he was... Yeah, he was, he was legit high IQ. Does that blow your mind? That's really surprising because he was always like nonverbal and just gnawing on things. Yeah. It was all... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely a lot of overlap with um Fetterman. He likes to gnaw. Yeah, I think Ashley, you were right about about Trump being kind of a Pied Piper controlled op because you can talk all the stuff you want. At the end of the day, he kicked it all off. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yep. was just and he he Go resisted ahead. the lockdown, which was where I was like, "Well, this is the right choice." So, so um, points for that. You might be familiar, probably are, with Monica Perez in the you know of the Prop Report and uh, Monica's deep dives. So she had she used to say this a lot that it will take a Republican, so that it you had to have somebody in there like Trump in order for the people who are most likely to resist this stuff to yes. fall in line. Um, and Absolutely. that if, if Hillary had been in that, it would have been totally different. Like people would right. absolutely, you know, no so way she's... some woman taking my guns, <laughs> no bump stock, man, no how. Yeah. I, yeah, I, exactly. I agree. I see, I see the same thing. Like um, the uh, Democrats were, the party of the working class right but obama sold them out to wall street so and it's like they didn't see that like they were blind to it it just it like a sucker punch in their in their blind spot and the same thing when gun when trump goes after guns or you know any any other what what happened Operation under his watch speed did uh did the clive and bundy that was obama right that wasn't trump right the bundy ranch debacle yeah i think that was i don't obama. think that was trump I, I I was tempted to try to play, pin that on Trump, but I'm wrong. <laughs> well, you can pin Operation Warp Speed on him. He loves taking credit for that. I think they did a wonderful psyop with Trump. Uh, they got people like me on his side because they were lying about what he was. He was guilty of all this, you know, BS that was clearly not true. And they never talked about the stuff he did that actually was wrong. So it was like, yeah. I found myself defending the man all the time. Yeah, Bundy's standoff yeah. was 2014, so that was Obama. Yeah, that was Obama. No, I can, um, again, from a reverse psychology standpoint, if you want to get people to do something you think they might not want to do, yeah, <laughs> that makes total sense. It you makes nothing the but of sense. The leader of the resistance is the one to say, hey, let's try this thing that we didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, well, yeah. if anybody makes that call, it, it is qualified to make that call. It's you. Yep. So and the other weird thing, the overlap. So this is my working theory. Um, now, I'm no researcher. I'm a speculator. OK, so I just want to be clear about that. But I think that Brits versus the West, like whatever, does the West even have a name right now? Will they have a name? What do you all think? But NATO. I think that. Okay, yes. Perfect. So Brits versus NATO. But NATO is the really good guys. Um, Brick. Bricks is the really bad guys. So I think that they need that dynamics the same as um, like James Evan Plato talks about Pokes and Pepsis. So this is the global mm -hmm. Pokes and Pepsis. And yeah, I think the new that. Cold War. Yes, exactly. And we've always been at war with each other and, and all of that stuff. So I think that uh, Trump and Bolsonaro were used. I mean, it was almost exactly the same thing. Like they said the election was stolen in Brazil. Bolsonaro was the guy that was a little bit more conservative. You know, he kind of questioned some of the, the COVID stuff. And it, it was like it was such a similar playbook. It was really mm -hmm. bizarre. Um, and I was like, this is just a fucking 
this is a charade. This is crazy. Yeah. I keep going back to that clip I saw of Donald Trump body slamming Vince McMahon into a table for real. <laughs> they hate each other. Exactly. I go back to when <clears throat> Trump was, got bailed out by some super wealthy guy no one ever likes to talk about named Sheldon. Hmm. And when in reality, when someone saves you like that, you kind of like owe them for life. Hmm. You know, so I really saw an independent person, you know. Yeah, I saw a video today of a very, very young Trump and a very, or well, I will say a younger Jeffrey Epstein uh, laughing and cutting up and, and elbowing each other and just having a good time. They, I mean, they best look like friends, they were huh? just, yeah, best of best of buds hanging out, uh, just, you know, having fun. And I think that's what the thing is, is like they, um, as you were saying, RBL, they, the, what he actually did wrong, they would never point that out because that is what they all do wrong. They're right. all warmongers. They're all like have no regard for life. They are all authoritarian. They all support, you know, the destruction of our liberty. Uh, so they're, they're all the same. So if they mm -hmm. pointed that stuff out about Trump, then maybe people would have asked questions. I don't actually know. I, I actually, maybe it wouldn't matter at this point because people don't ask many questions. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Funding um, genocidal dictators overseas just to sell guns and like the environmental devastation were the things that I that struck me as like, why is nobody talking about this? Like it's all P tapes and made up things, you know, because well, it's safe. So, yeah, he is an op and they, they ran that smoke screen for him. But it, it's I mean, it looked like the CIA staged a coup when they put it Biden in. So it's like. Are they just fucking with my head so hard? You know what I mean? That I don't know what's going on anymore. Like, uh, maybe they are. They must be. 81 well, million. Yeah. Yeah. 81 million votes. It happened. Most yeah. popular president in the history of our it's country. The no 3 a.m. right other angle. president has ever gotten that many votes. Ever. Joe Biden not is even the Obama goat. And, and Obama admittedly was like a religious thing that took I mean it was like a a real big thing like oh, everybody was like still to I'm gonna day, be the guy that votes for Obama and changes the history of you yeah know, to America. this day there are still people that will get triggered if you say a, a single crossword about Obama he can do right. no wrong in their book he's literally black Jesus <laughs> it's almost like we gave we gave all the accolades and respect due to like a Martin Luther King to Obama and then forgot about Martin Luther King and what he mm -hmm. thought completely threw that out the window. Well, he was an interesting character himself. Um, I'm, I'm not completely convinced that um, he didn't, uh, he wasn't in on the, the whole deal. Now I'm not mm -hmm. saying that like he offered himself up as a sacrifice or anything like that, but um I've come across some things that have have made me start to question his legitimacy uh, as a psyop. So, beyond the philandering or whatever, correct? Obviously, correct. Yeah, some of yeah. his income sources were rather questionable. Yeah, as a social movement tool, he was very valuable. Mm -hmm. He may have and very effective. Oh yeah. So but this, it may have gone to his head, and that's maybe what happened, you know, when Memphis. Mm. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of the Rosa Parks uh, revelation that, you know, the the real Rosa Parks was a pregnant single lady, and they couldn't have that on the newspapers for their movement. So they staged it with a, like, a, you know what I mean? The, the original woman that DOG that did that brave act was not the, mm -hmm. the one presented. Yes. I had heard. Yeah, and that's not an uncommon occurrence in American history either. Uh, Makes the me person who, who really actually wrote does the Richmond, heroic North thing. of Richmond. Yeah. Yes. 
Did they kill that guy in a bar and steal his song? <laughs> that's a that's Make a valid it. question. Sprinkle some and... meth on him. <laughs> that's a very very good question, and he's back in the news now. You know, right? Uh, he's the gift that keeps on giving. I don't know how yeah. you can take all that money and then be like, "Why were the tickets so expensive?" Like giving him a hundred grand. Yeah, I don't understand how you can be think? a human version of the dress. That just boggles my mind. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? No, I don't, I don't follow the the no. dress that fifty percent of the people say it's blue, and the other fifty percent of people say it's it's gold oh. or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. I loved that. It was blue and black. Yeah, was whatever it was, I don't too, remember. Like a, I didn't pay any attention the, to uh, it at the there time. There was a sound bite that was like this too. It was like me broccoli what? or something. Like it was two different things. They oh. Laurel was one of them. Laurel, yeah, Laurel, or. or Something Stanley. Medics. The medics trick our brains pretty quickly, don't they? Mm -hmm. And if you're suggested something, then that's what you hear in like a in a situation where it's just weird backwards gibberish. Like Well, that's interesting that you that you say it that way if you're suggested something, because I had heard it suggested that that was the reason that everyone was losing their sense of smell when they got sick was because it had been suggested to them. Mm -hmm. Um, now I would have considered myself someone to not believe that because I already was one, you know, asking questions and didn't believe, you know, I, I was, I was not believing that the narrative or whatever, I did get sick. Um, and I did lose my sense of smell. So I just figured it was the thing that will never, ever go away. But was it or was it just the flu? But you had this, you know, this mass hypnosis that was taking place or something. Yeah, don't uh, you always you kind of lose your sense of smell when you're when you have the flu or you're sick? Probably. Doesn't that and always maybe happen? you just don't maybe you just don't notice it as much because it was like yeah, you don't focus on it because it's not later. painful. Right. It was different. It was different in my household. And, and we got it actually in December of uh, 19 after someone we knew flew from Australia to Florida and then to where we are in Wisconsin. And they landed with fevers and my wife rushed over and gave, you know, one of their kids like a baking soda bath and some apple cider vinegar in the bath, to try to get their fever down. And then like 32 hours later, we all had fevers in our house. And my wow, wife lost my wife lost taste for a month. No, yeah, it was like it was quick. It got in so quick and so fast. And for us, we were like terrified because we got four kids with these fevers one by one lining up for it real fast. Mm. And if I remember correctly, it was like two or three days with high fevers. And we were like on the verge of like, you know, do we need to go get care? Can we take care of it at home? And we made it through at home, you know, just using what we knew at the time. This is before anyone was talking about, you know, um, any of the supplements that were out there to take. Right. And then, you know, three months later is when, you know, February, March comes through and it's like, oh, well, that we had that shit in December. That's obvious what that was, because it was the worst we've ever had ever in our lives. Right. Everyone mm -hmm. says they got sick the worst they ever did before they announced the COVID, like but way yep. before in that December. Wait. Yeah. In that in that fall or winter. And that's when it's whatever on the world. But, you know, whatever the bioweapon was, I know there's some like Dollar Vigilante who say there's no there's no bioweapon. I, I think there's something. I don't yeah, know at what the very, to make of it. At the That's very like least, this, this whole like like terrain, was... the terrain thing. I think I'm sorry to step over you, but That's I okay. feel like no, this whole terrain versus like whatever viral theories, germ theory. Like germ theory. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel like that's the new like flat earth. Like they tacked onto the end of like jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams. Like it's like pointless. And then it just makes you look like, you know, Un incredible <laughs> that you know in that way well it is just another way to divide people you know it's something yeah. for yeah. for people to argue about that that neither side is ever going to be able to conclusively prove you know that's yeah. that is true i i mean i do question virus and germ theory and all of that i do but i don't argue with people about it um because I do think that it's difficult to prove, but I will tell you that uh, we talked about this maybe on the WTF forum 
where perhaps the body is having a sympathetic response or gets some sort of, um, (laughs) this is going to sound stupid, but like some other vibe from another body and they begin a detox as well, like Mm. yawning or some other sympathetic response. I mean, I I'm not saying I know, I just try to mold things over and go with things that make sense to me with the information I have at the time, you know? So I'm, I'm I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. Like I've heard this but, idea that it's just a, a natural detox when you have the flu or whatever, and it's not that you've contracted anything, but it's just like a time when your body chooses to do this or whatever. Right. I And, you know, that kind of makes sense. And the other thing I thought, though, is that, OK, so let's say it is virus, then what made sense to me was maybe just a weaponized flu um, that they had taken a flu and tried to make it worse or, you know, or at the yeah, very least like, create a new train that would be they took received a shotgun badly. you know they took like a little shotgun and stuffed it full of uh hiv and then they took another one and <laughs> put the flu <laughs> yeah. in it and then like they shot them at each other a bunch of times until it stuck and they were like we did yeah. it it's and kind they, of that was the exact Dietrich, process that, that i heard that they used rbl that, that was excellent <laughs> <laughs> and this was in fort dietrich in 2017 yeah. Or before, or thereabouts, right? Uh, depends a bunch of people on were sick, and then they said there was a big thing to. going on. Because I mean, it's there's there's records of them working on a SARS-like virus mm. all the way back into the nineties. Yeah, and there's early purchase orders for all the mm-hmm. yeah twenty seventeen for kits. for COVID test kits. Yeah, so bizarre. there's just mountains of evidence and we're here. The anniversary of 9-11 has just gone by and we're nowhere on that. So it's like not to memory be hole. Memory not to feel hole hopeless and encourage others to feel hopeless. But I don't know. What are I'm, we doing? I'm <laughs> curious because, again, I exist in in a completely different realm from like the rest of you guys. Right. I don't have a whole lot of interaction with normies anymore. Like, are there still a lot of people buying the official narrative on 9-11? I think so. It really must be that way because it's in the history books in our schools, you know, the official narrative. Yeah, but so that doesn't me... necessarily mean people believe it. Like, well, do, does just you... nobody talk about it anymore? I think, yeah, it's I, passe I... to talk about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't had a conversation with anyone um, like a normie about 9-11 in a long time. But people definitely are still believing the official narrative. Like I have an example of um, I had talked to my sister and brother-in-law not that long ago. And I said something about censorship on YouTube. And they're like, YouTube is censoring? <laughs> And today, uh, or earlier this week, my sister gave my niece a COVID test. So there are people that are still buying it. And I guarantee you that if I brought up 9-11, it never, nothing other than the official narrative would be what they believed. Now, it's not because they're stupid people, but they do have three kids. They're very busy. They're working. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I feel like people are kept in that state. So they don't have time to ask questions. Yes, um, that that the answer is you are correct. Uh, they are meant to be kept busy, so that they don't have time to think about things and start asking questions. Uh, that is literally the purpose of the American lifestyle, uh, and it was engineered to be that way, so that you could have a nation of compliant citizens who would do what the government tells them to do. That was, that was one of the main reasons for the, the education system that was installed in the United States and in other Western nations, and also including in China. Most people don't know that. Chinese Drizzle. schools are almost identical to American schools. I have a guess about you. Yeah. You're angry at the education system because it failed you. And 
tried to brainwash you and indoctrinate you too. Yes, but I'm not angry about it anymore. I like, understand yeah, yeah. it now. So most of my anger is gone. The, what, but the, thinking back to when you were subjected mm -hmm. to like high school and whatnot. Yeah. Middle school. Yeah, I was the nail that stuck out. I got the hammer more often than anybody else did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess yeah, and that, they like... they tried they literally tried like all of the tricks on me that they had in their arsenal at that time. If I had gone through the American education system even 10 years later than what I did, I would have ended up on meds. I guarantee it. Cuz they put me in the gifted and talented and uh when I acted out too much and got kicked out of there because I was, you know, being myself, calling people out on their bullshit because that's that's what I do. Um, <laughs> then, like, once I got to, to middle school, they wanted to put me in group therapy. And that continued into high school. They kept trying to put me into group therapy. And I would just get to the point, like, where I was like, you people are way more screwed up than I am. I'm just going to go back to class. Yeah, good for you for not for knowing it was bullshit all yeah. that you know like while you were actually going through it because I really didn't I just didn't I just felt like it was me not that I was in this fucked up like public school slash prison you know I don't know it to me it was just obvious and and I don't even know why but like I can remember being in class and watching all of these supposedly individuals acting in uniform. And I'm like, this is the most bizarre fucking thing in the world. Like not a single one of them wants to exercise like any individuality whatsoever. And like, I could just, I, I was never able to understand that. And, you know, that caused me to be essentially an outcast in, in all of the, the social hierarchies, right? Because I didn't fit into any of the groups. I didn't want to be uh, a part of any group. I wanted to be the fucking center of attention, you know? Yeah. So. I refuse to stand for the pledge starting in freshman year. Yeah. Never Thank did. They, they couldn't make me. Yeah, no, they could Actually, I brought up the ACLU. They'd send me to the office and make me sit in the office for the whole class over and over. And I was like, okay, so you're denying me a chance to have an education. It's going to affect my grade. And over my free speech, maybe I should contact the ACLU. Good for you. That's great. They hated me. Got rid of me of the first chance they got. Yeah. I had, I always got in trouble for talking and I especially got in trouble during channel one news because channel one was total bullshit and it was yeah, forced it was propaganda. Clearly. Clearly. Oh, you guys are channel an, one? It was Glanderson Pooper and Lisa Lane. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I made a video about that. It was like a chunk of Runner Richards videos. I pulled out and it's like a short talking about how they want to, they want to have a, you know, 25 minutes of all these kids days, put a TV in the classroom and run ads. Oh my gosh. I've got to, I have to watch that because not until recently have I even heard people talking about channel one. And I've been thinking about it. I was like, why the fuck does nobody talk about channel one? It was mandatory propaganda every single day. It was disgusting. And they were and such the dickheads. If you weren't paying attention to it. It just occurred to me that the morning news is convenient because you wake up and you want to know what's going on that day. But when you first wake up, there are like barriers of bullshit shielding that aren't up yet, maybe perhaps. And that first info in the morning is extra powerful programming. Mm. Would not surprise me. Well, not to mention the fact that it was also training you to be a good consumer once you finally got out of high school and you entered the workforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no different than what they did to other generations. It's just the technology that they employed to do it was different. That's all. It was updated yeah. for the times. 
And speaking of what they did to other generations, can you imagine like the way that they traumatized an entire generation by making them think that they were going to be bombed by the Russians at any moment? Duck and cover. And your desk is going to protect you? Come on. So that it was almost like what it reminds me of is CIA activation. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So my father-in-law was kind of interested in Trump back in, you know, the like the early days, like 2015, 2016 or whatever, but they had been lifelong Democrats. So then, you know, the war between Trump and Hillary comes around. Well, as soon as they start with the Russiagate stuff, it was like a flip switch for that man. And he has been totally like Trump derangement ever since then. Yeah, they hit a trigger. Yes, um, they did. It's it's interesting uh, that you mentioned that because what just popped into my head was, uh, was it 1980, 85, 86, the uh, Challenger, the Challenger shuttle disaster? Yes. Yeah, 85, um, I think. Yeah, that was being broadcast live, and I remember watching it in I school. Was in first grade, yeah. watching it when it happened yeah. live. Yeah, just like every child was traumatized. Nine eleven. Yes. yes. Yeah, it was. They made sure that people were watching. They wheeled, uh, yeah. and this is back in the day. They had those carts with the yep. heavy CRT. Yeah. The huge cable boxes and, and yeah, VCRs. the AV cart. Yes, Massive. it was a great effort to make sure we were all watching, and we didn't watch every space shuttle, but there was a teacher on this one, so every student yes. in America yes. had to watch it. Yeah, isn't that I something? Didn't even and think then about this, that to one. hear that she's still alive, or there's someone that looks very much five, like her living in five Florida of the seven of them. Yeah, are still alive. Yes. Can't provably. I was, just yeah, getting ready to bring that up, provably. so I'm glad that you already did, and yeah. I didn't sound like the crazy person. Oh, no. I saw that. Uh, who was it? I think it was uh, my buddy Scott no, here to do interviewed that. Hibbler uh, a couple of weeks back, and he was talking about it. And he was he was like, yeah, I got I got the receipts for at least five of them. I can nail them dead to rights. Well, the, the first place that I saw it with the, was this guy, Parasite, P-A-R-A-S-Y-K-E TV or something like that. Um, his little, it was like a TikTok that went, uh, kind of viral on Twitter was where I originally saw that idea. And he does go through and, <laughs> and show the pictures like, oh, so-and-so has the same first name and they're working as a, a law professor at this college or whatever. You find a lot of, uh, people get professors, professorships. After they've accomplished whatever. Or they end up in Alaska. A lot oh, of people in Alaska that. that are supposed to be dead. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Like who? Give me an example. Uh, well, one of, the, one of the guys who allegedly died on the uh, shuttle Challenger. Okay, the challenger uh, is, guy is alive and well in Alaska, and and I think he's he's working at a college. As a matter of fact, <laughs> yeah, I've se- literally they get several to be of them. professors. <laughs> yeah, like put me in a job where I can have sex with younger people and have uh, pressure over them for their future. <laughs> and, you know, it's like okay, here you go, operative. There you are. <laughs> I, and I'm sorry, I went there with that, but. Well, I mean, it's kind of part of what college is for, if you ask me. I don't understand why anybody who goes through it thinks that they got something valuable out of it. I've watched. You know, someone told me you could just go in for free, sit there, take notes. Yeah. It's called the auditing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People, people should just do that. Yeah, Gatto was a huge fan of that. Just go and sit then in take the test junior high kids when you're ready. It. They'll probably make it illegal. <laughs> have to have a COVID mask and eight jabs. Yeah, for sure. Well, 
Are you guys ready for round two? Yeah. Yeah? Kick it off. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm torn on it. I I would like to think that it doesn't have to happen. But I feel a little bit hopeful because so many people are doing something that I have not noticed before. Like they are recognizing that things are operations. A lot of people are saying that, and they're like, "This is an operation. This is bullshit." Oh, feds! Oh, look at all the feds! So I hope that that spirit is going to continue to grow and that people are going, well, actually, you know what? I do obviously hope that people are going to wake up, but I feel like that reaction in and of itself is part of the PSYOP because they want the distrust of the government. They, if the Mm -hmm. goal or if the, what the world might look like by 2030, as stated by the world economic forum, if that, the goal of that is to have the United States no longer be the world's superpower, then I do think that you have to have a crumbling of the system here. So maybe people waking up and thinking that it's just the quote government as opposed to like the new world order, maybe that's part of the whole thing. I don't know. Well, it is um, a weakening of the central authority of the American government is one of the goals, but not so great that it loses control over its dominion. Right. Um, Because again, they need, they need the U S to still be the driving force behind the West but not so powerful that it's literally trampling everybody else. They, they need it to be a team player now so that they can then start synthesizing it with the East. Um, and then also you have to achieve parity between Mexico, the U.S., and Canada in order to bring about that economic union. Uh, and and turn that into its own zone. Um, I mean, there there are a lot of factors being brought to bear upon the uh, weakening of American power, uh, but it's never supposed to get to the point that it devolves into total chaos, even though... That's where they want you to believe that it's going and that it's inevitable and that it's literally just like right around the corner every single day. But it's it's never going to get to that point. A question for you, Driz. Yeah. Did you see the new Truth Stream video about the um, hidden boxed Burning Phoenix that went down at Burning Man on Thursday, the day before the rains came? Yes, I did. Thoughts on that? Because that was kind of like not in the consciousness at all. I didn't see anything on it until they covered it. And, you know, considering who flew over from Ukraine to operate that, being the defense minister of digital defense. Right, right, right. Yeah, that part was like, oh, okay, just show your whole fucking hand, you know? (laughs) Yeah, and the Um, opera singer was there by chance. I do remember hearing about it somewhere else. It was probably Media Monarchy, if it was anywhere. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that was... um, (laughs) It wasn't just the burning of the Phoenix, right? It was the way the ceremony was kind of uh, hijacked ahead of time. Right, and then the players involved in, in all of this stuff. Like, I mean, you, you've got the, the symbolic fingerprints are everywhere, all over that, you know. Um, obviously, the, the symbolism of the phoenix, if folks don't know that, uh, it's the whole thing of, of uh, death and rebirth rising from the ashes and all of this being done for Ukraine so that they can rise up and defeat the evil Russian invaders and all of that garbage. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's, uh, it's, uh, spirit cooking, it's, uh, spell casting, it's 
all the stuff that we're told is make believe and you know uh, the only people that do it are crackpots and and that sort of thing, right? Um, so if that's true, why were they doing it? Yeah, you know, that's what I'm wondering. I, because I of... think that that they nailed it. I think Mel and Aaron nailed it. You know, they yeah. wanted to harvest the energy of this festival to try and direct it uh, over to their, um, uh, their, their body churning machine over there in Eastern Europe. Yeah. It's the same thing we were just talking about with broadcasting the shuttle yeah. challenger explosion into classrooms and everyone watching the towers get hit and then come down. It's that mass trauma, the yeah. energy collection it's, <clears throat> and it gets to be recycled and just tapped into time and time again. See, I'm more inclined to believe that the storms that came through uh, during that weekend at Burning Man were more a result of that Thursday night and the events that took place than they were like any sort of you know weather manipulation or modification. Because mm. it's that's the whole thing when it comes to whatever you want to call. It. I call it magic because it's just easy, that's a nice, easy word, right? Um, but you're manipulating energy systems when you do these things. There's always going to be uh, an effect that, that happens when you manipulate energy systems. You know, if you push something in a certain direction, the natural resistance of the universe is going to want to push it back in the other direction. You know, to balance things out and get back to a state of equilibrium. Hmm. I don't know, but I could be crazy. My ex says I am, so there's that. <laughs> Aren't we all I think crazy your here? ex is crazy, bro. <laughs> Dude, you have <laughs> For what no it's worth. idea. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that, though. This is a, <laughs> this is something I wanted to say earlier that I didn't get a chance, and I looked it up. Um, it's just if America is Babylon, right? I'm just wondering because in Jeremiah it talks about the wine in the cup was poisoned, intoxicating the men with wild ambitions and dark idolatries, and. Uh, it talks about all the waters of Babylon being poisoned. And then in Revelation, it says she is destroyed. The great city of Babylon is destroyed. She's become a home of a home for demons. That city has become a place for every unclean spirit to live. And uh, it's supposed to be like just wiped out, burned, desolate, naked, uh, without life, attacked by a 10 horned thing you know like 10 different whatever armies with nukes or whatever like you just fucking wrecked and um yeah i don't know you were talking about synthesis and i was just thinking about just complete destruction so maybe i like your idea better sorry i'll stop talking i think you're on to something there i mean there's definitely a lot to chew on yeah, you know, Babylon has symbolized a lot through time. And I, think I was just even... thinking about how we exported that poison mRNA tech everywhere we could. Hmm. Well, I don't think it well, was the United States that was exporting it, though, is the thing. And that's kind of the insidious part of all of this, right? Because, like, these corporations uh, they manipulated who, who, DOD yeah. Uh, yeah yeah even that even when you go to government agencies a government agency really is no different than a corporation it's just where their funding comes from that's the only difference and even in some of those cases there's no difference um, these entities are supranational so Saying like we exported it is 
really kind of a misnomer because you and I had nothing to do with it. Right. And that's, that's factually true, but I feel like it's a, it's a useful motivational way to phrase it because it's like for people that don't know about it, like you have responsibility here to be informed about it and maybe resist it. Like, I don't know. Not that I'm good at but, <laughs> waking people up. I'm terrible at it. Uh, the The best uh, luck I've had recently is with those um, posts about the musicians canceling shows because of strange illnesses. Those yes, seem to be getting through to the normies. Yeah, a little early. For... Yeah. When I first tuned in, I heard you guys speaking about this. So I wanted to say that real quick. Yeah. Now I really want to hear more from the other callers. So I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> it's uh mr guy rbl rbl meet mr guy now you mr. guy bowing bowing deeply to you sir uh <laughs> genuflecting as as you are a member of uh, a great organization of geniuses and logic professors and whistleblowers yes i agree i agree you're not talking yeah drizzle's really wise that's for sure i look up to james I'm just really old. Drizzle's awesome. All right, I'll take that. He's, he's gonna James make a T-shirt able to remain me. remain James under any circumstance with cameras on and all that. Hmm. I'm just excited yeah. that I finally get to talk to the other James now. That's awesome. Hell yeah, your James Corbett interview. Yeah, that's gonna What's be the fun. date of that one again. Uh, September 26th, I think. Let me double check. Coming up. That's right, because I do need to email him to confirm. I wasn't lying so when I said I made a note for myself. And there's a guy I've seen go through bald head, clean shaven face to glasses and gray beard. All these, oh, yeah, I that's mean, right. Yeah, I discovered Corbett and Pilato. Uh, I mean, James Evan Pilato and Corbett and Grove all the same year. And like to see all their media still out there all this time is pretty fantastic. Technically, it's I amazing that too. so many people don't know about that trifecta of people. It's just you discovered them much earlier than I did. I was a lucky guy who was digging and I had an MP3 player and I had all day because I was filling vending machines. So I would listen to podcasts six, to seven hours a day. And when I ran out of stuff, I just found other stuff, even if it was these old um, used to be these radio call in shows. Where people would all just dial into a number and it was recorded and, and they would all talk about uniform commercial code or free man on the land, legal stuff, identity, commercial stuff i got deep into that for a while and it was really hard to find these sources because there was no like channel it was just all these call-ins and then when you found one when you found one of the call-ins it was just like you know one call in a week for the last seven months it was just you know all these calls and it was sometimes very interesting information <laughs> one guy had well, a website. i wish i would have found them that long ago yeah, yeah. I, I didn't I decided not to try to do this. I mean, we were having kids at the time and we decided to get them vessels to use in the Sea of Commerce. So we got the birth certificate and social security numbers so that they could operate as vessels. Um, I know there's like different views on all that, but that's what we ended up doing. But um, there was one guy who was pretty interesting and in just his philosophy to life, Gordon Hall. And it used to be creditors and commerce was the site. And the one thing that was fascinating was this lecture he gave just about like, and it was, it was almost kind of like a Richard lecture on motivation for like living. It was a philosophy approach. And he quotes some, he quotes some books and quotes a poem, this really great poem called habit. It's unknown. If you search poem habit by unknown, you'll find it on the internet. And it's a great, it's a great tool to like read and then apply to whatever project you're doing in life. Because the, the basically the git of the poem is uh, habit is what either takes you into the grave or takes you to the top of the mountain. Whatever you make a habit will make your life a success or a failure. You know, it, it run you to ruin or run you to fame. That's kind of like the part of the poem. And uh, 
anyways, I, the funny thing is Gordon Hall ended up back in prison after being in prison for some type of IRS tax fraud or some kind of charge. I never even got to know whether he ever got out or uh, if any of the legal stuff cleared up. But that's why I kind of stayed away from that stuff, because I've heard people are successful, but I think a lot of people just get hassled by the police. You know, they're having their own plates or trying to make their own driver's license. You just get hassled. You got to spend a lot of time in court and that's no fun. Yeah. Well, that's how the system was designed. Yep. Was so that if you try to take that initiative, uh, you're going to have to have uh, plenty of resources behind you uh, in order to fight off the system. Again, it's it's one of the memes that I have in the collection. A bad system will beat a good man every single time. Because that's, that's what it's designed to do. Contributor to the incarceration and conviction rate in the United States. It's the rich men north of Richmond. <laughs> Your public <laughs> defender wants you to plea. Yeah. Wants you to plead guilty. And then to do time served or some small amount. So that's what you get. That's their counsel. Yeah, and that's pretty much across the board with few exceptions. Yeah. There are some exceptions to, to it, but they're they're as rare as they come. I laid out a million dollar police brutality case for my public defender. And they laughed at me and told me to plead guilty to like five charges or else I might go for five years for the attempted murder of a police officer. I spit in a cop's eye after he maced me while I was handcuffed in the back of his car when he was hosing me off and trying to drown me with the hose. I saved up some of the spit that was draining down my face, put it in his eye. And they were like, you could have had HIV. That's premeditated murder on a cop. Like they were just Trump making stuff up. It was a real miscarriage of justice. Like, I came up, I happened upon a cop beating up some kids and I was like, I'm going to report you. What's your name? And he's like, come here. I'll show you my fucking badge. Come here, butter. He starts beating me. <laughs> and cuffs me and takes me to jail. So yeah, yeah long story that short. That sounds right. There's no justice unless you can afford it. It's See what you should have done is you should have walked up on him and been like, no, nah, man, you're doing it all wrong. You got to kick him like this and you get in real close and you look at his badge. And you're like, all right, now I got your name, fucker. Oh, yeah, not <laughs> only that, but now you can be an instant felon if you don't, uh, during a riot situation, if you don't help them apprehend rioters, if they, they just, like, deputize you by pointing and yelling. They're like, you are a cop now, do it, or you're a felon. But yet they, they have no um, duty to protect you if they see right. somebody stabbing you to death, right? They just put you on the wrong side of the law if you don't help them protect right. the uh, Wall Street owned buildings right. while all the other middle class buildings burn down. That was one of the first things that I learned that completely blew my mind was that Supreme Court case. in I think it was like 2005, the dude on the New York subway. Like just unreal, absolutely unreal. Like that was what told me that it, not that I didn't already know and hadn't had plenty of run-ins with the law on my own up yeah, until that point. And if you bumped point, your head and forgot about that, watching the cops put on the hand sanitizer at Uvalde or whatever. Oh, good Lord, man. But yeah, they are not there for you at all. They're there Bro. to carry out the orders of their masters, and that's it. And I that's went to not sign you. For I went to sign for my house, right? When we bought this house, it was like six, seven years ago at the real estate agent. I go outside for a cigarette. I witness a robbery. This guy snatches a purse, a purse from this girl and runs up the street and she's screaming. Blah, da, da, da. And I run across traffic, four lanes, chase this guy up the sidewalk. Like I'm just behind him. I'm asking people to help. Nobody will help me. I see a cop and I'm like, okay, a cop. I run over to the cop and he's like, puts his hand on his gun. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, Hey, this guy just stole a person. He ran up this street. You can get him. If you get in your car, he's on foot. And he's like, what's your name? 
Let me see your ID. And he tries to run me to see if I have a warrant, bro. That's what he did. Yeah. I guess he was like, the bird in my hand is worth uh, whatever. Bush. It was disgusting to me, dude. It, I was pretty disgusted by it. I mean, I was disgusted by the cop that made me do 12 hours in L.A. County for a fucking dime bag. The money racket. Yeah, pretty much. For the least effort. Yeah, it, in that case, like the weed, the small amounts of weed stuff, like the, the rest of it, I think, is a lot more um, serious. And it, I think that, it, yes, it is a money racket and um, a whole, you know prison industrial complex so there is something to that there qui bono there is a benefit to people for that but i also feel like it it also serves as a proxy war right because most of the people that are in there are um you know are like fighting age males when they go in um and so i think that it's creating this industry and through like what Yuri Bezmenov talked about, the demoralization, um, the war on drugs, all of those things we know is the war on us, but I feel like that was to really take out a huge part of our population that could be awake, aware, and resisting what is going on. And it's the same way that they've taken out people with, with drugs on the streets too. Well, and it's also taking fathers uh, or would be fathers out of homes making the state the father correct exactly yeah taking the um you know attacking the nuclear family as so much of of this stuff is also about back to your channel one programming in the morning you come home that same day and get your mtv programming to let you know that your family was dysfunctional and stupid and your dad was a loser and uh go get an abortion Yes. Fuck yeah. family yes. and smoke camel cigarettes because and it's I not did. a penis. <laughs> it is they not were a penis. dollar dollar twenty six a pack when I started. Now they're ten dollars. I checked oh, that dude, day. they were like seventy five cents a pack when I started. Oh, you, <laughs> I know, I know. You I'm got old. such cheaper <laughs> cancer than me. <laughs> it's funny because. Uh, the year that the that they made it a law that you had to be 18 years old in Virginia to purchase uh, cigarettes. I think I was I was 16 or 17, right? But I had already been buying cigarettes at the store across the street from my dad's house for so long that they never carded me anyway. Yeah, I started growing a beard when I was 13. I used to go to the den in Morgantown when I was like 16, 17, oh, wow. buy cigarettes all the time. They didn't, they never carded me. Yeah. I, I had know a baby face. Started cracking I had to down steal them. The ice cream truck in Baltimore sold them to me when I was like seven. My parents would be like, go get me a pop and a, some. That's because it was treats. Baltimore. Go on. Yeah. Mr. Guy, did you say that you had to steal them? Yeah, I had a baby face, so we just stole cigarettes. It's easy in the winter time because you had these big old winter jackets on, and it became a competition. We would leave someone's house and go to a store or two, buy a soda. We just buy always buy something, but you want to put a carton. The object was a carton in the sleeve. You know, some guys would get a carton down one each sleeve and one down the pants, and the record was four cartons. One guy put one in the front and the back of his pants and one down each sleeve. Oh, that's ballsy. You know, and then when you you know when you're 16, 17, you're handing out packs of cigarettes to all the kids from high school. All the girls love you. you know. 16, 17, shit. We there were doing is. that when I was you know uh, 21, living in St. Louis, man. We would hit up you know the they... CVS like once a week. The ice cream truck. Speaking of, one kid would go and ask for sick like three packs of smokes and just grab them and run. And <laughs> the driver, if the driver got out and chased on foot. All the other kids would get in the truck and get the rest of the smokes. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. That was the that was the play. Yeah. You I stole a pack of a uh, carton of Virginia Slims off the back of a truck one day. And this guy came out and saw me, caught me red-handed, and started chasing me and screaming. He looked like Super Mario. 
<laughs> I was like I was like 15. <laughs> and I outran him like a motherfucker. I just kept turning around, running backwards, and laughing at him <laughs> and saying shit like, "You look like Mario, dude." Like it was fun. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, it's totally good. <laughs> Oh, good times. That was when uh, theft was still frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, now I'd be a cultural icon and get a mural painted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially if they found out the cop beat me. You know? Damn. Oh, yeah. All right, so so have the have the normies forgotten about George Floyd at this point? Because you never yes. hear anything about him anymore. No, they got a George Floyd tattoo on the G Floyd tattoo on one shoulder and the and stick me here on the other shoulder. <laughs> Commemorating their first Moderna injection. Right. The tattoo of their Vax card and their Vax I swear number. to God, I was in the grocery store and I saw a lady with a circular tattoo that like said something to do with the vaccine and she had a band aid, like a fresh gauze and and medical tape over a fresh injection and she was wearing a mask and i was like thank god she's wearing a mask let's get out of here i stay six feet away from those people because yes. they're shedding hashtag yeah. don't shed on me yeah i looked nope. down quickly i was like what, what do the arrows say to do uh, i gotta get away from here quick floor tell me what to do to save me <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking about the the George Floyd thing, though. So uh, Miriam Hynine has done quite a bit of work on this. The Bee Lady, she did the documentary, like the disappearance, disappearance of the bees. But anyway, so she started digging into the George Floyd Floyd story, and y'all probably do know this, but she talks a lot about how there's a lot of really weird things about the story, and to her, it ultimately seemed like an op. Which is one of those things that after the the information was presented to me, it made sense. But at the time, I thought it was an organic thing. Like, that's how far behind I was in realizing that almost everything's an op. <laughs> um, and I, I thought it was a real thing. But there's all these weird connections between. Uh, so Derek Chauvin was in the military and he had a, a bad reputation of being really abusive around town. But he also was a bartender with, or excuse me, a bouncer with George Floyd at this club that they both worked at. But George Floyd was like a known criminal. And then there was a Sinaloa cartel connection and the store owners lied about like who was there, who spoke with uh, George and his friend when they got the fake money, just all kinds of really weird stuff. And she thinks it's to bring in the new color revolution here to the United States. Oh, yeah, totally. I can mm -hmm. see that. 100%. See, and we talked about this the other day, right? You're the genius that pointed out all these, what, what are the figures, 10,000 a day? <laughs> Refugees, air mm -hmm. quotes, fighting age males just coming across the border, mm -hmm. stacking up, stacking up. They're going to be ready to put on those blue helmets and take those machine guns when uh, the civil war race war, pay, you know, whatever they're trying to brew all this. And it's been accelerating for 15 years. It's been uh, mm -hmm. religious differences, anything divisive to polarize and separate the country. It's been one thing after the other on the news cycle. And I know it sells the news cycle, but it's like more than that. The way they focus on, these kind of issues that are just ultra divisive. Well, especially the, the race thing, right? Like that's the, that's the Trump card. That's the card you play uh, when you really want to get things going, right? Cause for whatever reason, people are attached to the color of their skin, right? It's part of their identity. Therefore, it becomes part of their politics because that's the age we're in now, is the age of identity politics. I identify as this or that or the third thing or whatever. Um, and now they've gotten people into the position where it's not just that they disagree anymore but they polarize when they disagree now so it's it's yeah. not that we can agree to disagree anymore 
we have to convert you now. Like you, you can't be allowed to exist on your own because you're a danger to yourself and everyone around you because you don't agree with us. I really only feel that way about you know, mandatory vaccines for six month old, you know, in, <laughs> children with this experimental stuff. You know, that's, that's where I really want to pull back from people that support that. Cause I feel like that's well, a whoa. I can't agree to disagree with an innocent life. Well, no, I agree with you on that. But they... It seems like they want all of these divisions to converge on a single point, which will then allow them to roll out you know, the hardware and the blue helmets and all of that and declare martial law. I think that might be Trump. Take control. Eh. All the pumping up of energy around him. I think you would have his to, name anywhere. I think you would have to kill him in order for that yeah. to happen. Yeah. And then send out the army in the, uh, in the good old boys overalls with the mega hats and have those black ops guys go shoot up the gay pride parade somewhere and that's it or you know whatever blame it on blame it on the uh conservatives they want to do that anyway they're the number one threat told you fbi was right we're always yeah, right they're already doing that yeah and then those blue helmets get deployed to yeah, help I mean, crack down been... on all the armed americans They've been setting up the right wing extremist narrative mm -hmm. for a bunch of decades. Yeah, they got you know, so many going pieces going all over the there. way back to Waco and Ruby Ridge and all of that. That's all been in service of that narrative. And again, they're just like they did again this year. All right, well the the Patriot Front thing obviously didn't work, so now we got to try something different. And they roll out this black and red neo Nazi thing, which again, everyone that that I heard talk about it was like this is obviously just an act. These people are larping. It's another passport that somehow didn't vaporize along with the titanium engines or whatever yeah. you know yeah and then they end up connecting one of the dudes to you know the the azov nazis in ukraine and then you're like oh okay so he's cia then so, i don't know it they have been planning for the contingency, and by they, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about the Department of Defense, uh, which used to be called the Department of War, for people who don't know. They just changed the name. But they have been planning for the inevitability of a race war for the better part of six decades. Like, they have plans on the books they've run exercises of what they would do in the case of widespread unrest in major urban centers all across the country like they've already war gamed all of this shit out they're just i would waiting i would refer you to spooky mk ultra victim whistleblower charles manson oh yeah Oh, well, yeah. Helter Skelter, man. Yeah. Whitey and black hair. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean... <laughs> Somebody was told him that at some point, probably. He looked at the documents, maybe. It could be. Or it could be that he was running in some of the same circles because it's interesting that, you know, you have Manson in California in the 1960s. And you also well, have Ronald Reagan... Ooh in California as governor in, in the 60s and then into the 70s. And it was actually Reagan's administration in California that put together the plans for Operation Garden Plot, which is what they would do in the event of a race war. They just happened to be in the same place at the same time talking about the same things. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, those things happen. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Yeah. Totally. And there's a lot of other weird, uh, weird stuff in California at that time too. You know, you have the whole Charles Manson, Laurel Canyon connection, a lot of weird, weird, strange things, uh, surrounding that situation, like Jim Morrison and his dad and these, you know, um, whatever the op was to present people like the doors as cultural interrupters. I think I understand what it was meant to do. Um, I think these people that were protesting war were good kids in college and nice dress shirts with good GPAs. And they turned those people into, I want to get so wasted. I fuck in the street in the mud. To stop yeah. the war. Yeah, and I think that was part of it for sure. It utterly, just like they threw the flat earth on the end of the 9 11 truth movement. I saw it happen in real time. Like nobody's going to change my mind. Well, I think they, they achieved a lot of things with that. So, first of all, this was whenever they really started going after the idea of traditional, a traditional family, a traditional marriage. They mm-hmm. introduced the idea of feminism. So, it was. It, it began a this was like a fracturing campaign because there was so many different threads to this like like no i was fault, saying with the feminism thread no fault divorce uh no fault divorce yes. also came into play at the same time yes and you know getting women uh more into the workforce things like that taking them out of the home away from the kids and then you're separating this generation of like teenagers from their parents because the parents are more traditional and they now have what would be considered at that time like radical beliefs and they also introduced the idea of free drug use and free sex outside of marriage to that generation as well yes yeah tvs and tv dinners not that we weren't doing abortions before then but you know they finally became legal yes and so i think all of those things were done to really fracture these kids from their families and to begin moving in you know in this progressive direction that we've been very gradually in for a very long time Very progressively. Yeah. And I also think that dare for like nineties kids was also another psyop. It was to get people used to the idea of drugs and teach them about drugs. (laughs) It was to make you want to do drugs. Same way that the just say no program in the 1980s was designed to do. The news on my, on my TV when I was a kid was like the dreaded Jimson weed grows around this area of baltimore and kids are using it to get high this is how they do it and they feel these effects and you know what i mean and then they're like but but watch out because it's deadly and like all us kids are like we didn't stick around for that part we were like oh and this is how you do it out the fucking door with our little cape towel capes i'm gonna get stoned it's so true my fifth grade class, we had the dare officer come in. I believe it was the first time it came to our school. I believe it was 89. And the officer came in. We met the canine dog. We went through the program, the little cartoon book. And like yes. seven out of 10 boys I knew within a week were bringing in crushed Advil and rolled up paper with scotch tape, pretending they pretending they had joints, pretending they had powder in a bag, yeah. like. Prepping. We were trying to imitate it because we already were rebels and now we were given a new identity to take the rebel identity. And me and all those kids were using drugs in junior high school. Like that's that it happened. And those pigs yes. were like farmers planting seeds in a revenue yep. crop yep. for later. Exactly. For sure. Oh. And maybe even to desensitize to things like heavy duty stuff. So by the time those kids uh, were introduced to D.A.R.E., by the time they were in, you know, the college age, that's when Oxycontin was coming on the scene too, um, yep. to be more widely available. 
And, and of course, you know, the whole opioid epidemic is, is a thing in and of itself, but you know, they're all, all of these things are threads in, um, in a tapestry. My high school gig, I was lucky enough to get high like four times total before school. Right. <laughs> and, and on these times when I would just not get enough sleep, I'd come into school and have like my squinty eyes. Cause I couldn't afford glasses and be tired, you know? And they'd be like, are you high on marijuana? I'd be stone sober. They'd be more concerned. They'd be like, you really look high. We got to test you or look at you, you know, come to the office. Let's talk. And then they're like, did you remember to take your uh, methylphenidate or your, your Ritalin or whatever? Did you remember to take your 60 milligrams of Ritalin? You know, we're worried you're stoned here. Take this, take this meth that made Hitler. If I can lose all connection speed. to his humanity. Yeah. See if you love your mother now. <laughs> like here. Yeah. So fucked up. But so two of the times up. I got high before school was my art teacher giving me a ride because I missed the bus. And she was like, hey, yeah, I'm going to smoke a ball on the way. You can hit it if you want. Just don't say anything. Oh, well, she's my dead gosh. and I'm saying it now. <laughs> Damn. And you're a high school kid? Yeah, I was in like maybe 10th grade. I missed the bus and my art teacher was one of my favorite teachers. She drove past, picked me up a couple times. Both times she just had a bowl. Just happen to have a bowl pack. Oh, that's great. How could she function? I can't really like smoking and work. Don't really. You know, her job was to go to school and watch Bob Ross six times. So it was like the same episode. She had to be stoned. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to draw comic book characters. So I didn't get anything out of her class, really. But I watch Bob Ross nowadays. Think about her and stuff. Yeah. I hope Bob Ross was really the nice guy that he has been. Well, he was a vicious murderer for the state in Vietnam or wherever, and and he had to turn over a new leaf. And so he's Mm. the polar opposite. He doesn't raise his voice. He doesn't. He does no violence. He lets squirrels pee on him. But you got to admit, (laughs) it's great cover for him to be a secret agent. Oh sure. Oh yeah. I've been looking at Christopher Lee. He's popping up in the algorithm. Christopher Lee is a Satanist. Christopher Lee talks about being a Satanist and and Satan and how cool Satan is. Christopher Lee is cast as Satan. Yeah, this has been all over my YouTube algorithm. Them two, Christopher Lee, and he was a military Ooh. man and very involved and connected man. And maybe he was, you know, I don't know. Who knows? Played a bad guy really convincingly. Yeah, yeah, he did play bad guys well. Yeah, apparently yeah, he, he killed Nazis. Creepy. The IRL. Like actual Nazis or just people that they called Nazis? He did some military service and killed a bunch of people, I believe. Oh. And he was a master fencer, like swordsman. All kinds uh, of man shit. of many he was into talents. The occult. He read the, the ancient tomes. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I have, I've heard many a story about Christopher Lee, but this is the first I'm ever hearing of him being a Satanist, but Oh you know, yeah, the quote was something. The poll quote was something like, uh, "Something you know, a man scorned has no other, nowhere else to turn, but darkness or something like that." I don't know, but yeah, hmm. he was into that stuff apparently. Wow. Apparently, there's there's more people into it than you think there are. I was jazzed about my Chris Christopherson record I found the other day. And then someone's like, oh, yeah, he was a CIA spooky handler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was super spooky. Holy shit. Yeah. Everybody sucks. What about Steve Urkel? Can I trust him? (laughs) I'm just out of people. I know. Is there like one? But that's the whole thing, right? Of Like if anybody is allowed to get rip and famous, as it were, are they, you know, that those people have to get approved. So it's just like Mm -hmm. us thinking oh cool yeah. uh jim caviziel is in this movie you know we've talked about this no the sound of freedom is an op the fact that they're allowing it to be shown they're allowing the it's a whitewash to be out there it's yeah. a whitewash to limit the the scope of conversation right something like that well i think it's it's i would say that's part Focusing of it but the... then i also think that the people that are involved in it are super weird and suspect you know Tim Ballard, all that stuff. Oh, so putting the message in a in a poison container. 
like somebody yes. that's going to be discredited thoroughly later. So the message is also discredited. That so. and it's also a kind of uh, revelation of the method as well, because they're basically showing, right. look, this is how the child traffickers look, do it. They fucking know we put right. it out on the movie and they're not stopping us. That's so right. I guess it's fine. nobody's, you know, nobody's uh, rising up and saying, stop doing this. That lawyer mind that comes, you know, like, well, like uh, when when they run it in the paper that you have an inheritance for 30 days or whatever, if you didn't read the paper, you don't get it. If you weren't informed, you couldn't act on it. Well, we've got five minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, when uh, our broadcast evening ends, who wants to get the last word in? I think you should have the last word, Drizzle. No, I talk all the time. This is <laughs> Friday nights are for you guys. They're not for me. Well, I'll add. At least I will sign out and I will uh, start by thanking you for your time for, you know, doing this. It's fun and interesting and um, I really like it. I enjoy your show, as you know. And uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, feel free to uh, reach out on Twitter at Union Unknowns. And then you can find our stuff at unionoftheunknowns.com. That's our link tree page. So if you want to check out our podcast or touch base with any of the members, join our Discord, etc. Well, I appreciate the kind words, Ashley. Thank you. Absolutely, Drizzle. I really appreciate you, Drizzle, and likewise the other people that do thorough, in-depth research and try to break it down for others in a useful way. Um, I am not one of those people. I've tried to emulate what uh, several people do, and it's it's. I hope I'm not. I haven't done a disservice, but uh, yeah, I, I I tend to find interesting news clips and play them over records and rant. And barely audibly. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. fun. So, well, I can help you with thing. the audio production so that you're a little bit more audible. Well, I just started messing with headphones, so uh -huh. I think that might help me. And, so, uh, RBL, where can you be found? I have an Odyssey channel. Um, I think it's oh, Recycled Bin Laden on Odyssey. If you search it then okay. I think you'll find it. It's just dumb. It started one day. Um, Pilato was taking a week off from Media Monarchy, and I was like, I'll take over while he's gone. <laughs> Try to make a new <laughs> show and play records, and I just like sandwiched it together. And That's it was cool. Dumb. But I got encouragement. You. I, I was encouraged by the drizzle, and one eye of the doodle bug gave me a lot of encouragement so that made me want to keep going and then jay wilderness encouraged me um from those great he has a great couple youtube channels the outer light i think is the name but he did the um what's going on uh youtube series where he compiled all of these athletes just falling over in the middle of games oh. along with citing the articles where you know names and stuff such incredibly great work and so that really gave me a lot of inspiration too. But yeah, it's like, yeah. there are so many people that do really important shows. People should be watching that. <laughs> like Grand Theft World and, and this show, Mr. Drizzle's show. Yeah, definitely. Like Drizzle puts on a good, a good production. Well, thank you. I Thanks appreciate Thanks for talking that. to me, you guys. Yeah, I had, I, I had fun. Um, I think if you're in the media monarchy discord, I'm, I'm in there every now and again. So um, I'll be on the lookout for you there too. Yeah. If I'm not following you on Twitter yet, I'll try to do that. For sure. Please do. Well, thank both of you guys for uh, showing up tonight as well as Mr. Guy who has uh, dipped out already. Uh, so he unfortunately does not get to, uh, say nice flowery things to me and, and try to make me blush. But <laughs> I have a feeling uh, that he's probably listening right now. So maybe next time 
Mr. Guy stops in on a Friday night, he will uh, try to make me blush. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just have to wait and see.